Hi everyone, welcome to our final week of the Potholders Galore Crochet Along. This week we have two patterns coming out, so the second pattern will be released on Wednesday. But for now, let's focus on the Simply Daisy Potholder. This pattern is made using the star stitch to create tons of texture. It has a slightly noticeable seam, but you really can't see it. Let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is make a slip knot, place it on our hook, and tighten it up. Now chain 49. If you'd like to customize the size of your pot holder, there are instructions linked in the description box below. To make our first star stitch, yarn over and insert your hook into the second chain from the hook. Yarn over and draw up a loop. You should have three loops on your hook. Insert your hook into the next chain. Yarn over and draw up a loop. You should have four loops on your hook. Insert your hook into the next chain. Yarn over and draw up a loop. And do this once more, inserting your hook into that chain, yarning over and drawing up a loop, and you should have six loops on your hook. Now yarn over and draw through all six loops. Now chain one, and you've just made your first star stitch. For our next star stitches, we are going to go into that chain one space, yarn over and draw up a loop. We're also going to insert our hook into the leg of the stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop. Insert your hook into that last chain of our star stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop. And now we're going to insert our hook into the next two chains, yarn over and draw up a loop. So we should have six loops on our hook. Now yarn over and pull through all six loops, chain one, and we have finished our stitch. To make our next star stitch, we're going to go into that chain one, yarn over and draw up a loop, insert our hook under the leg of the stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop, insert our hook into the last chain of the stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop, and we're going to insert our hook into the next two chains, yarning over and drawing up a loop until we have six loops on our hook. Then yarn over, pull through all six loops, and chain one to complete the stitch. At the end of the row, we should have two chains remaining, so we're going to use those to make our last star stitch. Alright guys, we are going to use our last stitch as a base so that we can start crocheting along the bottom of the chain. So we're going to make a star stitch like normal, inserting our hook into the chain 1 space, the leg of the stitch, and the chain that the star stitch is already in. Then we're going to rotate our work so we can see the bottom of the chain, and we're going to insert our hook into the next two chains and yarn over until we have 6 loops on our hook. Now yarn over, pull through all six loops, and chain one to complete the stitch. Now we are going to continue to make star stitches all the way across. When there are two chains remaining, we are going to work our last star stitch of the round and we're not going to join with the slip stitch because this is worked in a continuous round so that there isn't a noticeable seam. Round two is a round of single crochets. So we are going to insert our hook between the first and last star stitch and we are going to make a single crochet. Mark it with a stitch marker so you know where the round starts and then we are going to insert our hook into that first chain one space that goes along with our star stitch and make a single crochet. Into the next chain one space of the next star stitch we're going to work two single crochets and we are going to do that all the way around working two single crochets in each chain one space so 
When we get to the corner, we're going to continue working as normal, making two single crochets in each chain one space. We are going to work two single crochets in the last chain one space, and we are going to start round three. To start round three, remove your stitch marker, and we are going to make a beginning star stitch to start the round. So to do this, we are going to yarn over, insert our hook into the first single crochet, yarn over and draw up a loop, so we have three loops on our hook. Yarn over, insert your hook into that same stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop, so you should have five loops on your hook. And then insert your hook into that second single crochet, yarn over and draw up a loop, and pull through all six loops, chain one, and you've finished your first star stitch. Our next stitch is going to be normal, so we are going to insert our hook into the chain one space, into the leg of the stitch, into the previous star stitch and into the next two single crochet stitches. We should have six loops on our hook so we are going to yarn over and pull through all six loops then chain one to finish our stitch. Now we are going to continue to repeat the star stitch all the way around. At this point, you'll notice that your work is starting to curl upwards, which is exactly what we want. When there are two single crochets remaining, we are going to complete our last star stitch, and that ends round three. To start round four, remove your stitch marker and we are going to make our first single crochet into the beginning star stitch. Mark it with a stitch marker. And we're going to insert our hook into that chain one space of our beginning star stitch and make one single crochet. Alright, into Every chain one space after, we're going to make two single crochets. The reason we work our beginning star stitch a little different is so that there isn't a noticeable gap between the stitches at the beginning and end of each round, so that makes our seam a little bit more invisible. In the last chain one space, make two single crochets, and that ends round four. After a few rounds, this is what your pot holder starts to look like. It kind of looks like a little purse. At the end of round 14, remove your stitch marker and we are going to slip stitch into the first single crochet of the round. Now chain one and pull on that tail, making it nice and long so we can seam our pot holder closed. To fold your pot holder, grab each corner and gently push down into the center to create a square that meets on a diagonal. All that's left to do is seam our pot holder closed and add a chain circle. So this is done the same way as week one's fairy dust pot holder. So I'm going to direct you to the video tutorial for week one. There are timestamps included in the video to help you skip to the parts that you need. I hope you guys enjoyed making your Simply Daisy pot holders. If you did, please feel free to give this video a thumbs up. I cannot wait to see how your pot holders turn out. Just a reminder that the second pattern for our final week is coming on Wednesday, so stay tuned for that. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you soon.